Redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day is coming, that is coming, shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. Wait a minute. This is Advent. We're supposed to be thinking happy thoughts, aren't we? We're supposed to be thinking about cute little baby Jesus lying in a manger. We're supposed to be thinking about puppies and kittens and packages tied up with string and all that business. We're supposed to be thinking about the joy and wonder and magic of Christmas. We're supposed to be thinking about family time together and gifts given and gifts received. Isn't this what we're supposed to be thinking about during Advent? And yet we begin this service, we begin the service of the word with the words of the prophet Malachi, for behold the day is coming. Not with bells on, not wrapped up in a pretty little package, not with joyful Christmas songs and carols. Behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven. Oh, we could maybe work with that. It's nice to sit around the fireplace at Christmas time, isn't it? To get all warm with the family, to gather together. Isn't that a lovely thing? Burning like an oven. Oh, that sounds nice. It reminds us of chestnuts roasting on an open fire. This is good. We can work with this. When all the arrogant and evildoers will be stubble. The day that is coming shall set them ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. We can't work with this. This doesn't fit in with our narrative. This doesn't fit in with what the world would have us believe. This doesn't fit in with what the church would oftentimes have us believe during this holy time of year. This isn't about happy feelings and warm thoughts. This isn't about snowman and parson brown. This isn't about chestnuts roasting on an open fire. This is about sinners roasting on an open fire. And this is what God has in store for all the arrogant and evil doers. They will be set ablaze, says the Lord of hosts, so that leave them neither root nor branch. There's not much hope there, is there? I mean, he sets them ablaze, so there will be neither root nor branch. There will be no regrowth of all the arrogant and all the evildoers. There will be no hope for our sinful hearts. There will be no hope for our sinful flesh. And this is the point of Advent. Your king comes to you. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. We sing. Once for every sinner slain. This isn't the cute little baby Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. This is our God and our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has come to this earth for one reason, to die for you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who has come to this earth for one reason, so that you may not be burned up by God's wrath as you deserve, but that so you may have a true and eternal hope a true and eternal hope that is based not on thoughts and feelings which come and go for the human heart is nothing but a liar, a vile and evil liar. Your heart will always deceive you. Don't listen to it. Your heart is going to die. And it wants to take you with it. Listen, rather, to the word of the Lord in which you have hope, in which you have life, in which you have salvation. Listen to the word of the Lord, which says, But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Listen to the word of the Lord, which says, You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Listen to the word of the Lord. You shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord of hosts. Listen to the 
to that word of the Lord, which gives you hope, filled with all joy and peace and believing. Listen to that word of the Lord, by which the Holy Spirit abounds in hope in your hearts. Listen to that word of the Lord, which has changed your stony heart, your heart that was destined to death and decay. Listen to that word of the Lord, which has given you a new and living heart, a heart that is set not on your own ways, a heart that is set not on wickedness and evil, a heart that is set rather upon the righteousness of God, which is risen as a sun with healing in its wings. Listen to that new heart that the Holy Spirit has created, that new heart which has been washed in the waters of holy baptism. Listen to that new heart which has had the, the fruitful and abundant seed of God's word spread upon it again and again and again. Listen to that new heart in which that seed of God's word has taken deep root that cannot be burned away. Listen to that new heart, which calls you this day from your sinfulness, which calls you this day from wanting to stay only by the manger where there you see a sweet and innocent baby who cannot hurt you, who cannot do anything for you but make you feel good. Listen to your heart, which calls you to this, his better manger, his altar, where that flesh and blood that once laid in the manger of Bethlehem is here given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Listen to that new heart, which stands firmly upon the unchanging eternal word of God. That new heart, which by faith says, for the forgiveness of sins. Yes, Lord, I believe. Listen to that new heart. For there will be signs in sun and moon and stars, and on earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And that new heart, which is created from the living and active Word of God, from the living and eternal Word of God, will indeed straighten up. As the world continues to spiral downward into wickedness and chaos... As the world continues to spiral downward into death and into eternal damnation and hell, you will straighten up on that last day. For you have something more sure. Heaven and earth will pass away, our Lord Jesus says, but my words will not pass away. Beloved in Christ, this day, you have been called, gathered, and enlightened by the Holy Spirit here in God's holy house. This day he has brought you into a sanctuary as sinners deserving nothing but damnation. This day he has declared you righteous for the sake of his loving kindness, for the sake of his mercy. This day he invites you who were once by nature children of wrath. To the wedding feast of the Lamb. Now children of God. This day. God has seen your friend. This day God knows your heart. This day God has given you something more sure. Than pleasant thoughts and happy feelings. This day God has rescued you from the burning oven that your sin and your unrighteousness have earned you. This day, God has brought you salvation. And so this day, we say to the daughter of Zion, we say to ourselves, Behold, your salvation comes. The Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard, and you shall have gladness of heart. This day you have heard the majestic voice of the Lord. This day you have heard that great good news. Your sins are forgiven for the sake of Jesus Christ. 
the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This day, beloved in Christ, you have an eternal and abiding hope. And this day, it is fulfilled what was written by the Apostle Paul. This day, the hope of God fills you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.